Hello everyone, welcome to Sai Medha Koti Hyderabad. In this session, I would like to discuss about previous year questions of ESET in the concept of basic concepts of the DC machines. The let us start from the question number 1. Question 1 is a in a DC machine laminated parts are the armature and option 1 core, option 2 yoke and option 3 pole and option 4 pole shoe. The laminated parts are in the DC machine is a armature and the pole shoe. Why? Because suppose we have a main parts in this case. So, one is a pole uh, yoke of the machine, the yoke, okay, first part of the machine let us assume, okay, it is a yoke and second one is a pole core and next one, the third one is a pole shoe, uh, fourth part of the machine, so that is a pole, the shoe and armature core of the machine. So, these are the parts of the machine's point of view. So, given parts in this question, core, yoke, pole and the pole shoe. So, nature of the plugs, okay, in this case. So, nature of, okay, nature of the plugs, okay, in the yoke. So, what is the nature of the plugs in the yoke? So, it is a DC nature of the plugs. Nature of the plugs is a DC nature of the plugs. And in case of the pole shoe, so nature of the plugs is a, the AC nature of the plugs or time varying nature of the plugs. Similarly, nature of the plugs in case of the armature core is a, the AC nature of the plugs. So, here yeah, the plugs uh, okay, is a AC DC nature, then what will happen see, so the, here eddy current loss, okay, this one is the eddy current loss. In, the, in this part is equal to the 0 and here the eddy current losses the is equal to the 0 and here also in case of plux is a AC nature. So, eddy current losses is not equal to the 0 and in this case eddy current losses also not equal to the 0. The eddy current losses occur in the any magnetic material. So, due to reversal of uh, due to uh, pi net value of the conductivity when time varying nature of the flux is passing through it. So, if the flux is a DC nature, there is no eddy current losses. So, that in this case, the here eddy current losses is equal to 0, eddy current losses also equal to 0. But in the pole shoe and pole core, our eddy current losses are not equal to the 0. So, therefore, in order to reduce this eddy current losses, so, here laminated part, okay, this one is the laminated, the part is a required. So, now this one is also the laminated to reduce the eddy current losses. Now, in this case, no laminations are required. Why? Because there is no eddy current losses. So, that is why no laminations, okay, here also the no okay, laminations are required okay, in the pole shoe. So, laminations are required. So, in case of the pole shoe and the armature core. So, mention that in DC machine, the laminated parts are la armature and the pole shoe. So, that option 4 is correct for this question. Got it? And next one, let us solve the question number 2. The voltage of a DC generator may be conveniently be increased by increasing air gap flux density and decreasing air gap flux density, option 3 increasing the length of the armature and option 4 decreasing the speed of the rotation. So, we know that generated voltage in the generator, so generated okay, voltage, so in a generator, the here in generator E is equal to the BLV, so generated voltage in a per conductor's point of view. So, now this is the BLV signed it, where B is the flux density. So, this is the maximum generated voltage. So, this maximum value when theta is equal to 90 degrees, that is why the basic equation we have taken. So, E is equal to BLV sin theta, where theta is equal to 90 degrees, the maximum generated voltage per conductor's. 
So, this one is a per conductor I have taken single conductor span. So, now E is equal to B L V sin theta. So, in this case in this equation where B is a flux density of the core and L is a actual length of the armature core, length of the conductor and V is a angular velocity of the conductors. So, here the voltage can be increased by increasing the flux density ok increasing the a flux density. So, it is it is not a this one is the main flux density. So, now where this in this case ok here the B is equal to the field flux by area of the armature core the area of armature the core ok and L is a the length of the conductors ok length of the conductors point of view and next one uh, the V is a angular velocity of the conductor. So, angular the velocity of the this conductors ok V and L and the V. So, we can increase the main field flux, but here mention that air gap flux density. So, that is why this is not correct and decreasing the air gap flux density it is also not correct. The increasing the length of the armature core. So, length can be increased it is a possible answer and next one decreasing the speed of the rotation this is also not correct. So, that which option is correct option number 3 is correct for this question ok. So, next one the question number 3 laminated armature core in the DC machine the reduces the following losses the hysteresis loss eddy current loss armature copper losses and the field copper losses. So, eddy current losses occur in the any magnetic material. So, due to its finite value of the conductivity when the time varying nature of the passes through it. So, this eddy current losses so depends about this is nothing but eddy current loss W is nothing but. So, it is a I square R loss ok this I square R loss. So, in magnetic core ok this one is the in magnetic core. I square R loss in the winding is known as copper losses. I square R loss in the in case of the magnetic core is known as eddy current losses. So, here eddy current loss ok in this case I is a directly proportional to the conductivity of the core and whereas, the resistance is a inversely proportional to the conductivity of the core. So, therefore, conductive will be cancelled out the remaining terms is the eddy current loss directly proportional to the conductivity of the core materials. So, what will happen by laminating the material? By laminating the armature core, ok, conductivity of the metric armature core decreases. So, decreased in the conductivity, the decreases eddy current losses. So, that is why answer for this question option number 2 is correct, ok. And next one let us solve question number 4. A, a DC motor is taking the 40 amperes armature current from the supply and develops the torque T. The field strength is reduced to 80 percent of its original value and the armature current is increased to uh, 80 amperes. The new value of the developed torque will be option 1 1.2 tesla and 1.4 tesla 1.6 tesla and option 4 1.8 tesla. So, initially mentioned that ok given that in this question the armature current Ia 1 so that is equal to the 40 amps of the armature current and develop the T 1 amount of the torque ok this one is a develop the torque the T is a T amount of the torque. So, torque is equal to torque in the case 1. So, that is equal to the T amount of the torque. The field strength is reduced to 80 percent of it is 80 percent of initial value. So, initial ga 100 percent on the unconte. So, then it is reduced to 80 percent. So, then what will happen? So, this one is the flux field flux pi 2 is equal to 0 0.5. 8 times of the pi 1 and also the armature value reduced and the armature current is increased to ok increased to the 40 amp. 
so this armature current i2 is equal to the 40 amps now we require the torque t2 values okay during uh, we we need to find out the developed torque in the motors how do we find this developed torque so we know okay during operation of the motor so during operation of dc motor okay so during the operation of the dc motor the torque is directly proportional to product of the field flux and armature current okay torque is directly proportional to the field flux and armature current so from this equation we can write the t2 by t1 is equal to the phi 2 by phi 1 the multiplied by ia2 divided by ia1 just substitute the given values in this equation so t2 the t1 is equal to t amount of the torque and phi 2 is equal to 0 point okay, 8 times of the phi 1 so divided by phi 1 so multiplied by armature current ia2 so this ia2 is given that 80 amperes okay 80 amperes so this one is a 80 divided by the 40 so now this will be cancelled out the 40 multiplied by 2 so this you will get 80 so 0 0.8 into so multiplied by 2 so this one is a the t2 is equal to 1.6 times of the t so torque developed in the case 2 is equal to 1.6 t so that option the 3 is correct for this question and next one let us solve question number 5 so in a lab winding the number of the braces is always equal to option 1 double the number of the poles and same as the number of the poles half of the number of the poles and option 4 is a 2 and number of the braces okay always in the in lab winding so number of the braces okay is equal to the number of the brush okay this is as equal to the number of the parallel paths okay this one is a the number of okay parallel paths so where number of parallel paths is equal to the number of the poles so this number of parallel paths is denoted by a so this is equal to number of okay this number of the poles the number of poles is nothing but the p number of the poles so for example point suppose here the four pole machine is there okay this is the four pole the dc machine we have so in this case okay lab connected armature winding point of view how many number of parallel paths the four number of the parallel paths okay here the number of parallel paths is equal to number of poles that is equal to the four and number of the braces also is equal to so how many number of the braces the four number of the braces always parallel path is connected between suppose this is a positive group of the brace and this one is the negative group of the brace positive group and this one is the, the negative group of the braces always parallel path is connected between positive group of the braces and negative group of the braces this is known as p1 pa parallel path 1 so now this was the parallel path number 2 so parallel path number 3 now this one is the parallel path number the 4 so now here so this positive group of braces are connected okay like this so negative group of braces are connected so now this is a suppose if it is a dc motor so then what will happen it is connected to the dc supply now this is connected to the negative supply this is the i amount of the current so now this is the vdc supply current and the supply current one so this is example point i have taken per four pole machine so always parallel path is connected between the uh, one positive pa pa two braces positive group of braces and negative group of braces so that if four number of parallel paths are there so we required four number of the braces and that's why in the lab winding number of braces always equal to the number of parallel paths that that parallel pass is equal to the number of the poles the same as that of the number of the poles so that option the two is correct for this question okay and next one in a, a DC generator works on the principle of the Fleming's left hand rule, Lenz law, Ohm's law and Faraday's law. So DC generator operates on the principle of Faraday's law. So it is the first law, it states that 
whenever a rotating conductor is placed in the stationary magnetic field and EMF induced in that conductors. So, mathematically EMF okay, this per conductor, so this per conductors is equal to, so it is a BLV okay, sin theta, where B is a flux density, L is the actual length of the conductor, V is the angular velocity of the current. So, this law is nothing but, so by Faraday's laws of electromagnetic induction, so we can say that EMF per conductor is equal to, so induced EMF per conductor is equal to BLV sin theta, where B is a flux density, L is the length of the conductor and V is the angular velocity of the current. So this is exactly, so it is the first law. So here we have a two laws, Faraday's laws of electromagnetic induction, first law. So what is the statement here, whenever, okay, this one is a, whenever the A rotating conductor, okay, this rotating conductor, conductor, okay, is placed in the stationary magnetic field, placed in stationary magnetic field, magnetic field and EMF, EMF induce in that conductors, in that conductor. So, this is a the statement of the Faraday's laws of electromagnetic induction. DC generator operates on the principle of the Faraday's law, okay. Suppose uh, if the question ask about how to find out this direction of induced EMF, Direction of induced EMF can be obtained by using the Fleming's the right hand rule FRR. So, direction of induced EMF in the DC generator can be obtained by using Fleming's right hand rule. So, this is a variation of the question in this concept. Now, next one let us solve question number 7. In a, in a 4 pole DC machine, uh, DC machine, alternative poles are north and south all the four poles are north poles, all the four poles are south poles and two north poles first and two south poles first. Always four pole DC machine. So, this is the position of the poles. For example, this one is a north pole and this is a similarly south pole and here. So, we have a the north pole and this one is a again it is a south pole. So, there is a armature core. Suppose, we have a armature core. Now, this one is completely poles are okay, revoted to the state or frame. So, this is a the state or frame assume as. So, this one is the completely state or frame of the machine. So, now armature okay, state or frame of the machine span. So, now this one is the north pole, south pole, north pole and this we can say that armature core of the DC machine. Okay, got it fine? So, alternatively poles are north and the south, north pole, south pole, north pole and the south pole. So, this axis is known as the D axis okay, here also. Now, this axis is also okay, known as a, the D axis, okay, axis between the two poles. Now, this axis you can say that quadrature axis. Now, here quadrature axis and here the angle between these two electrical angle 90 degrees okay electricals okay this one is the 90 degree electrical point of view. So, quadrature 90 degrees electrical quad. So, answer for this question alternatively poles are north and the south. So, option 1 is correct for this question. So, next one let us solve question number 8. The function of a commutator in the DC machine to improve the commutation to change the AC current to the DC voltage, to change the AC voltage into the DC voltage and to provide easy speed control. So, function of the commutator in the DC generator or in the which converts the AC voltage into the DC voltage in case of the motor which converts DC voltage to the AC voltage. So, now answer for this question the to change the AC voltage to the DC voltage. So, option the 3 is correct for this question, okay. And next one question number 9, the if the number of the poles in a lab wound DC generator is increased by a factor of the 2, the generated EMF will, option 1 increased by a factor of the 2 and decreased by a factor of the 2, increased by a factor of the 4 and remain same. 
So we are given that number of the poles in the lab and DC generators. So poles are the double okay, by a factor of the two. So increased by a factor of the means poles are double. So let us assume okay, let the P1 is a number of the poles. So number of okay, poles in the machine and the A1 is a number of the parallel paths, number of okay, parallel the path of the machine. So given in the question that the given the poles are two times okay that means P2 is equal to so in this case P2 is equal to the P2 times of the P1. So in lap winding okay in the lap winding so number of parallel paths also will double okay as the poles are increases the air the air number of parallel paths is always equal to the number of the poles. When poles are double number of parallel paths also will become double the A2 is equal to 2 times of the a1. So, A2 also is equal to the 2 times of the, the A11. So, we know generated voltage in the generator. So, we know that the generated voltage the EZ is equal to phi ZN by the 60 into P by A. So, this is the generated voltage in case of the generator. So, now from here we can get so these are remains constant the here the EZ the directly proportional to the number of the poles by air. This is a only for the lap winding. Suppose if it is a wave winding, the EZ is a directly proportional to the number of the poles only. So now by simplification, suppose EZ2 divided by EZ1, the is equal to P2 divided by P1, the into A2 divided by the A1 well, sorry. So this one is A1 divided by the A2. So now simplify the EZ2 divided by the EZ1, the is equal to 2 times of the P1 by P1 into A1 divided by 2 times of the A1. The A1, A1 will be cancelled, P1 will, P1 is a cancelled and also 2, 2 also will be cancelled out. So this generated voltage EZ2 is equal to the EZ1. So the answer for this question, option 4 is correct for this question, got it? And next one. The let us solve question number okay, 10. The commutation commutator segments of a DC machine are insulated from the each other by a thin layer. Option 1 paper, option 2 mica, and option 3 is a rubber, and option 4 is a PVC insulation. So, now in this case, so uh, here commutator segment, suppose let us assume so this is a commutator segment C1 and commutator segment C2 and next one this is the commutator segment the C3 okay like so on okay these are the commutator segment. So now this insulation okay it is the insulation the between okay this one is the insulation between commutator segment. So this name of the insulation between the commutator segment the is equal to mica insulations okay name of the insulation between the commutator segment is a mica insulation. So that option the 2 is correct for this question. Okay.